This is Dmai here. I am going to go over the quiz questions from yesterday's quiz. Some of you had some trouble with these, so we want to get to the root of them before we go on. So let's start out with number one. The problem was change 7 elevenths into a decimal. Now this is going to be a decimal number um, without a whole number because the 7 is less than 11. The question some of you had was whether you divide the 11 into the 7 or you divide the 7 into the 11. So this is where we're going, this is a dividing bar right here. So we are going to, the problem can read 7 divided by 11. So if you read it that way, we can set it up that way, 7 divided by 11. Now, 11 will not go into 7, so what we have to do is start adding zeros. 7 is a whole number, so the decimal point goes to the right of the whole number, and we add a zero after that. Once we add our decimal point, we're going to pop it up. Remember, we talked about popping it up. So we popped it up. 11 is a whole number, so we do not need to move the decimal. And then we just start doing a long division problem with the decimal point up here. So we take 11 into 70 and it goes 6 times. 6 times 11 is 66. Then we subtract and we get 4. Now 11 cannot go into 4 and we are writing a decimal number so we are no longer writing r period 4. Whenever it's a decimal number we need to continue to divide if it says to divide it to two places, then we'll take it to three and round. Um, this one doesn't say, so we're just going to keep going and see what happens. 11 cannot go into 4, so we're going to add another 0. We'll bring the 0 down, and we'll do another division problem. 11 goes into 40 three times. 3 times 11 is 33. I like the 11. It makes it really easy to multiply. 40 minus 33 is 7. 11, we're, look at this, there's a 7 again. 11 cannot go into 7, so we have to add yet another 0 and bring it down. We'll go a couple more times. 11 goes into 70 6 times. 6 times 11 is 66. We subtract and we get 4. 11 cannot go into 4, so we add another 0 and bring it down. 11 goes into 40 three times. And you should start noticing a pattern. We're going to always get this 4 and this 7 for our remainders. Now look at the pattern up here. It's repeating 6, 3, 6, 3. And it will keep going 6, 3, 6, 3. When there's a repeating numbers, if you have one number repeating, you would put a line over one number. But here we have the 6 and 3 both repeating, so we put a line over the 6 and the 3. You could also write this problem 0.63 with a line over it. Either one is correct. Um, what else was I going to say about this problem? Oh, if they said to round this to the two decimal points or to the nearest hundredth, let's do the rounding method. Now this one just didn't, didn't say that, but if it says round to the nearest hundredth, remember we'll take our number 6, 3, 6, 3. This is the tenths, the hundredths. Remember, we circle the one where we're going to round it to, that's the hundredths, and we point to the next number. If it's a five or above, we're going to round it to a four. If it's below a five, we keep it a three. So if we were to round this to the nearest hundredth, it would be 0.64. Now you have to follow the directions on that. Okay, let's do number two. Swiping that all out. Okay, this one was reduce the fraction. 210 over 294. Now these weren't horrible. Some of you just didn't go far enough. Some of you weren't sure what to do at all. That's the main reason I'm doing this video. Now there's several different ways you can do this, but I'm going to do the prime factorization way since we have time right now. The prime, I noticed question four I think everyone got that right, so I don't need to do that one. Almost everyone got it right. But this one was a problem. Um, there's a prime factorization way, which you guys know how to do because you could do question four. So I'm going to do my, my tree. You guys like the division bar. But we're going to take each number, and we're just going to start dividing it. And as I do that, I'm going to talk about divisibility rules, too. 
So if it ends with a zero, I like to work through my twos, and then when I run out of twos, I go to threes, then fives, then sevens, etc. So I'm going to start with two. I know two goes into it because it ends with an even number. So we're going to get two and 105. Now, we could go a couple different directions. I actually did five here. But look at this. If we add up the digits, they add up to six, which is divisible by three. So this is divisible by three. So let's divide it by three. I thought I found it easier to divide by five, so let's just do the five because you can see it really easily. Five goes into ten two times. Five goes into five one time. So it's going to be um, twenty-five or twenty-one. Twenty-one, and then we can we know that twenty-one is three times seven. So those are the numbers. We could have also divided this by a three up here and got diff we would have gotten the same prime numbers. So after we do our factor tree, we can just write two times two times three times five. Don't do the exponents at this time. We're just going to write out what the prime factors of the numbers are. Okay, we're gonna do 294. So again, I can see that it ends with a two, so it's divisible by two. So I'm going to divide 2 into that. You have to do a little division problem on the side. I did. And so you get 147. And then what goes into 147? You could say, oh, is that prime? Well, one way to tell is to add up the digits. So we have 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 7 is 12. Because the digits add up to 12, which is divisible by 3, this whole number is divisible by 3. So remember, divisibility by 3, you can add them up and the sum is divisible by three. So we're gonna get three times, three times 49. And then the last one is, you hopefully know that one is seven times seven. So then I'm going to do my division bar and I'm gonna write what I get, two times two times three times seven. This is the, the well that's a lot of work right there, but this is the best way to make sure that you fully reduced the big numbers that we're trying to reduce. Now the twos will cancel out, the twos will cancel out, the threes will cancel out, and we simply get five over seven, and it's fully reduced because we made it into prime numbers. We're gonna do one more of these, but I'm gonna show you how some other people did this problem. So um, let's do this again. So two, we have 210 over 294. One way to do this problem is you'll notice they're both even, so they're both divisible by two. So you can just start dividing both of these by two. So you get 105 divided by 147. Then we're gonna see what they're both divisible by. If we add up the digits, they're, this is a six, and this we did before is a 12, so we know they're both divisible by three. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom. You have to do the same thing by 3. So we're going to get 105 divided by 3 is 35. And 147 divided by 3 is 49. Okay, this is the problem. Some of you stopped here and you didn't go on. If you did the prime factorization way, you wouldn't have that problem. Now we need to see what goes into both of these. Hmm, it's pretty tricky, um, but a 7 goes into both of these. There's not really a divisibility rule for this. So we know that 35, 7 goes into 35 5 times, 7 goes into 49 7 times. So we divide both of these by 7. This way is fine. The prime factorization way just assures that you're going to get a fully reduced fraction. Okay, let's do number 3. Number 3 is 540 divided by 720. I'm gonna do like a little cheat here, a little shortcut. You'll notice they both end with zero. So you can actually divide both of them by 10 right away. You can just chop off those zeros. You're not just chopping them off for chop sake. You're actually dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 10. Now I'm going to do my factor trees. So we get two and 27. 3 and 9, and 3 and 3. So I'm just factoring each of these numbers. It's a video, so you can stop it and watch it in slow, at your own pace. I don't think you can watch it in slow motion. Maybe. All right, 72. Let's do this one. 2 and 36. 3 and, 2 and 18. And then we have 
I'm going to run out of room on this one, 2 and 9, and then 3 and 3. I think I can scroll though. 3 and 3. So we're going to write those numbers up here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 3 2s, 1, 2, 3 2s, 1, 2, 3, and then 2 3s, and 3. All right, once you set that up, then you can start canceling. So we have the twos cross out. Um, we have this three and this three and this three and this three. Wouldn't matter which threes you did. And so you'll get your final answer. The threes left on the top, three over four. Three-fourths is your answer. It's fully reduced. Now, of course, you can do it the other way. So here you go. Pick and choose. 540 over 720. First thing, divide both top and bottom by 10. So you get 54 over 72. Okay, so this was divided by 10. We keep going. So divisibility rules. If I add these digits up, we get 9 here and we get 9 on the bottom. So 9 is divisible by 3, so we could divide both of them by 3. But there's also a divisibility rule that says if you add the digits up and they're divisible by 9, the whole thing is divisible by 9. So 54 divided by 9 is 6. 72 divided by 9 is 8. Okay, we're not done yet, though. I mean, the temptation could be to stop, but notice they're both divisible by 2 because they're even. So we're going to get 3 over 4. So that's another way to do it. Whoops, divided by 2, divided by 2. That's a second way to do it. The the only problem with this is sometimes people stop too soon. But if you use your divisibility rules by adding up your numbers, then you can tell that there's something else you can divide into both of them. All right, and number four is exactly the same thing as what we just did with the trees, and I think most of you got that right. So that's it for the quiz review.